Hello, Super user. So today we're going to look how to make enharmonic spelling differences between the score and the parts. Now this can be useful for a couple things. First of all, if you have a transposing instrument, well you might end up having some double sharps or double flats in the part, which won't appear in the score, which you might want to work out. The second thing that I've noticed a lot is that oftentimes because of how voice leading works, you'll have certain lines that will want to be expressed one way, but the chords underlying it will want to be expressed another way. And so to make it clear for the conductor what the chord is, you might want to spell it in one way so that way the chord looks right, but then the players will want to be reading a way that makes the line look right. I'll give you an example of that real quickly. So I'm just going to have a nice descending line here in alto saxophone, right? Like that, right? That's how you want to spell it with flats, so that way it looks like it's chromatically descending downwards. But let's say this chord right here, okay? What if it's actually a D major chord in the score? Then normally you'd want to write this as an F sharp, but an F sharp doesn't look right because we use flats when we descend chromatically. So in the part, we want the G flat, but in the score, we want the F sharp. So that's one of those situations. Another situation that comes up a lot is over here. In the score and concert pitch, we have a nice A sharp in the alto saxophone. But if you were to transpose that, you see we have an F double sharp. Now F double sharps are not that nice. So I want to change this in the part. So to do that, we're going to come over here to speedy enter tool. We're just going to select the note and we're going to hit the number nine. And there it is. That just creates the enharmonic difference. And if you look back at the score, it's already our original A flat. It didn't change it to B flat or something like that. So we have the spelling we want in both the part and in the score. And you can also see that this is yellow to show that they're unlinked between the two. So that's a very quick tip for today on how to improve the score and the part readability. So if you found this helpful, make sure to like the video. Each week I post new content about using Finale to its fullest. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified as soon as any video comes out.